Our next presenter is Oliver He. He is an associate professor of microbiology and immunology at the University of Michigan Medical School. His lab performs dry lab bioinformatics and wet lab microbiology and immunology. Um, he is going to present um, ontology development from the KPMP effort. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your invitation uh, for me to present uh, uh, our KPMP ontology work. Uh, so today I will talk about uh, how our KPMP is working on ontology. Uh, somehow it's uh, similar and some, yeah, also some differences as I can see, but uh, it's wonderful to work together, discuss uh, this and uh, promote uh, the wonderful field. I want to start with uh, a good paper uh, in the journal, in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, recently published. Uh, which uh, emphasize uh, this the role of ontology, how can ontology help to integrate uh, uh, clinical data and uh, basic uh, like omics imaging data together. And then eventually uh, we can study or for the mechanistic disease, uh, classification and the mechanism, we study all of them. So it's a wonderful uh, field now. And uh, uh, Matthias and uh, um, uh, Becky uh, have given wonderful introduction about the KPMP, so I don't have to uh, repeat. So basically, we are working on uh, three angles, like uh, clinical, molecular, and pathology angles, and we are focusing on two diseases. One is acute kidney injury, another one is uh, chronic kidney disease. But of course, under each two, there are many uh, subclasses. And then, for this one, you can uh, obviously uh, feel and see you know, it's a bigger problem, and we can probably use the term big data to summarize the challenge. So the big data, uh, basically, it can mean high volume and uh, high velocity and high variety. So yeah, heterogeneous data, it's very difficult to integrate them. And uh, so we have to make sure we can standardize them to, uh, in a way, in an ontology way, and then we can support the uh, sharing support, uh, support uh, analysis on which is very, very important. So this one, uh, somehow, um, Becky uh, has mentioned, um, basically, we have a lot of data. We are going to generate uh, uh, like the omics data, imaging data, histology data, specimen checking data, clinical data, and all the data. And then eventually all data will go to a bigger pool, we call it a data lake. And then the data lake will be somehow standardized uh, using ontology. Eventually we can have a knowledge environment. And then definitely there will be uh, some pipelines and can come back and forth. And eventually the knowledge environment will be useful to support the different tools like uh, raw data visualization, kidney tissue analysis, and the patient centric tool, et cetera. So here I'd like to introduce what we really do uh, for the KPMP. So basically we proposed and we are working on two ontologies. They are all community-based, they are all, all open source uh, based on the, the community. So the two ontologies are KTAO, it's a kidney tissue atlas ontology. So it's more like a kidney knowledge base, it's knowledge, like we put a uh, graph knowledge uh, uh, and you can put all the information there. So later on, I will say it's not only kind of independent cell lines and atomic entities, molecules, and we are actually linking them together. And then another ontology is OPMI, that means Ontology of Precision Medicine and the Investigations. For this one, we're trying to use it to more standardize data and metadata absorbed in uh, precision medicine and uh, its uh, investigations. And then this one, we feel like a lot of them are useful for KPMP, but they can go beyond the KPMP, can go beyond the, uh, like a kidney, like a lung or heart or, or the others, they can be useful. So we initially put the, the terms into the OPMI, and then later on we can import the, KP, the kidney related information from the OPMI into KTA. So KTA basically eventually will become a comprehensive uh, system of the kidney tissue analysis. And then our methods actually can be summarized in a, a recent paper 
I put in here in the Journal of Biomedical Semantics. So we call it uh, extensible ontology development strategy. So it's XOD strategy. So basically, uh, first of all, we like to uh, follow the openness, collaboration, those community effort, and which actually have been uh, like uh, quoted or proposed by Obo Foundry. And currently, the Obo Foundry is uh, the biggest uh, ontology community, and uh, we have the ultimate goal of to developing non-redundant interoperable terms. So yeah, you ideally, you don't see you know, like a one, one term having different ontology IDs because they are non-redundant, but they are also interoperable. Uh, but of course, we still have many things to do. So uh, our certain also uh, propose the using and align uh, different ontologies like uh, Wuberong, anatomic entities, human phenotype ontology, gene ontology, cell type ontology, uh, ontology for biomedical innovations, etc. So we use the top down and bottom up strategy. So top down is like aligned to top level ontology. Bottom up is to address various use cases by working together with our KPMP domain experts. So it's very important because personally, I'm not a kidney expert. Uh, yeah, so as an ontologist, I, I actually relies on a lot on working together with our domain experts, so which has been proving very productive. So here I want to introduce the KTAL. Basically, yeah, it's available in GitHub. You can find it from Bioportal, Bounderby. Currently, we have over uh, 5,000 terms. So this work has been uh, introduced uh, in last year's ICBO, the International Conference on Biomedical Ontology um, uh, Conference. So uh, we have paper on the other one. So here I'd like to focus on one aspect to illustrate how KTAL works. So initially, we got an Excel file uh, of more than 250 kidney disease gene markers and how they are related to cells and diseases. So we would like to answer one single question, like how KTAL can organize these terms, genes, markers, and link them together. So then we like to say, OK, let's start with a simple example, WT1. So which is a tumor protein that is a transcriptional factor required for pongicide development and homeostasis. And in our community gene, gene panel, we identified it as a CKD gene marker. So it's a clinical kidney disease gene marker. It can be regulated in polycytes. Now sometimes we find up, sometimes we find down, we feel like there can be some other factors which are determined to up and down. And then the question now becomes, how can we represent this information in k -Town? So to generate this one, we have a general design pattern. So in here, basically, you have a gene, you have a cell. So the gene is from the cell, and the cell is part of a kidney. In this case, a kidney is part of a human, and a human can be the HI disease or CKD disease, right? And the human have all kinds of qualities, like age, gender, phenotype. And the gene actually can be susceptible. You cannot see for sure, but it's susceptible to be up and down. And then we can there's no relation between gene and cell, so we can tell that one relation we say susceptible to be differentiated, um, differentiated, dif differentially regulated in CKD in cell. Basically, we call that it's more like a, a shortcut relation. It links many pieces, right? It links the gene, and it links the cell, and the gene has this phenotype, and uh, has this, this disposition, and the cell has this uh, kind of uh, concept. So, but uh, once you do it, it's a very powerful uh, relation. So I'm going to show you. So for example, let's use that, uh, that uh, gene example. So we can see, OK, now we have the marker uh, WT1. We use the ontology of genes and genomes to represent the, the gene, the protein. And then this protein, uh, using the, the, the new relation, uh, is susceptibly regulated in CKD. So where is CKD? So CKD, basically, we use the, the HPO is a human phenotype to represent the CKD. The word is a cell. The cell basically is a podocyte. So in the cell ontology, uh, we have the glomerular visceral epithelial cell. It's a, more like a, a formal definition, but the, the cell name is podocyte. So you can see also uh, this cell is a part of a visceral layer of glomerular capsule. So if you let it hang there, it seems like uh, yeah, you, you may get lost. So maybe we should find this term, right? So this term actually represented in Uberon or Uberon. So it's the term is, is the 
it's uh, basically once you put there, now you have the, the structure, you have a context, and now it's part of the, the kidney. So by doing so, actually, we model a simple story, which is uh, WT1 in Polaroid, which is in CKD. Also, it's simple, but it's not easy. But however, once you model this one, you can model hundreds of them all together, and now they are all in, we can call it the atlas, right? Now you have the anatomic entity, you have a cell, you have a gene, you have a disease, you have a phenotype. So how it can be used for? We can actually you know, do all kinds of analysis. Right? Once you put it into some idea for triple store, for example, you can do all kinds of queries. So here I just put one simple query, just a few lines of query, then you can find, oh, now we have five human gene markers. They are all in parasite and regulated in CKD patients. They can be up or down or, or can be, uh, we don't know yet. So it's a very useful tool. And now I'm going quickly to the OPMI. So the OPMI focuses on the precision medicine and investigation. Currently it's the OBO uh, library ontology already. And the current stage, we focus on the clinical data, uh, especially the data coming from the clinical case report forms and then uh, clinical common data model, CDMs. So why we focus on clinical data? Because in mouse or cell lines, you don't need to worry. You don't have so many variables you know, outside of cell culture, right? However, in human, you have probably hundreds of clinical factors, like as shown in the right side of the uh, figure, you know, uh, each, each factor can affect your results, your, your omicus or imaging data analysis. So you have to make sure you get as many as possible, as comprehensive as possible data in, and then you can support the data analysis. So uh, in our KPMP, we have 38 CRF case report forms. Uh, it's about uh, 3,000 questions. So you can imagine, right? There are all kinds of areas, like uh, you can start from the patient tracking, or enrollment, or pre-biopsy, biopsy, post-biopsy, post post pathology, et cetera. So uh, Becky also showed a similar figure, but uh, how to get the concepts, the entities out of it, or metadata out of it, it has been challenging. Uh, we have managed to uh, get a lot of metadata from those forms. Uh, here I listed about 10 uh, major data type, uh, metadata types and with many uh, specific metadata there. Uh, so we are actually still continuously working on to get more because out of the results sense, we can find more. We don't want to miss any useful one because that may affect the outcome of the omicus or imaging study. So I will go to the last part. It's about how OPMI can possibly integrate and represent the, the common data models. So there are many data models for now. Uh, here I list the three represented one. I got the OMOB CDM developed by OLSI. And then there are also PCOINET or CDs also they have developed their own uh, CDMs. So the OMOP one is a representative one. It has now over 1 billion patient records in databases that are following the OMOP CDMs. So uh, by looking for all these, uh, we can see they are very wonderful, right? Uh, but mean, meanwhile, on the ontological aspect, uh, we feel like uh, they have relatively weak uh, semantic relations among different components, and it's, uh, uh, different CDMs they are not uh, interoperable, so make it hard. Definitely, we don't want to say they are bad. We just want to say maybe ontology can help improve, can be complement, can be complementary, can can, can enhance uh, these systems. So how can we do it? So here, I just give one example. Like uh, we focus on one part, right? Like let's say we focus on adverse events. So in all of CDM, they have something called a condition occurrence, right? But uh, they don't differentiate what kind of conditions, right? The condition can be natural disease or phenotype, you know, without any medical intervention, or it can be uh, some conditions after medical intervention, like drug usage or surgery, heart surgery. Then we call it adverse events. So by differentiating these two, then actually we can do more meaningful things. You know, I think that the differentiation using the ontology modeling can be very useful. So here, let's give one demonstration. So let's focus on the heart surgery. So in our prior knowledge, we know the AKI instance is very high after the heart surgery. It can be up to like 10, 30, or even 50%. So let's see, let's study this one as a whole using the Outside data. Here I use IQVR data. Uh, it's a database uh, from a UK company. 
So our algorithm is like this. It's a focus on heart surgery. So it's our index time. And then we see, okay, to be qualified as an AKI AE after the heart surgery, we need to see the AKI occurs only after heart surgery, but it's not present in before heart surgery. So let's use the 30 day before surgery and then 14 day after surgery as our framework. So by doing so, we can identify a lot. We can identify like uh, 15,000 uh, patients in the, our cohort. And uh, here we use the operation in on heart, the slow matter, a code, and all the probably uh, hundreds, uh, if not thousands, uh, subclasses uh, you know, from slow matter. We use it as, as our way to get all the heart surgery. And then we look for using our pipeline to identify. Uh, so from the patients, we find like uh, the male seems like have, you know, has more of this type of adverse events than female, and it seems like they are more likely uh, to be in the senior uh, with age over 55 years. And this is the outcome, but let's look for the conditions because the conditions may affect the outcome. So conditions, when you look at the conditions, you find, oh, really, we have some findings here. We can find that maybe it looks like a type two diabetes and the nephropathy, they actually open happen, you know, like a, uh, in this type of adverse event, of course, you can find that the, the heart surgery itself, right? All kind of heart surgery. But of course, it's probably the reason why they do the heart surgery. But besides heart surgery, you can find something else. So this may be an addition, an factor that contributes to the AKI adverse event of the heart surgery. So we, we do some finding here. So this, this one just show you how we can do it. Yeah, one note is like uh, here we use the HPO, the human phenotype ontology, to represent the condition. Uh, by default, it's a SNOMED. So I actually, I met uh, with, with Olivia uh, just a couple of weeks ago in DC. So I show some results to, to Olivia. Yeah, yeah, you are here. And I, I, I see, so Olivia, Olivia basically asked me a tough question. So the, which is uh, why you don't use uh, SNOMED per se, right? Why you use uh, uh, HPO? Well, uh, it's a hard question, but the, for our case, uh, so the snow uh, terms given to us is at least, you know, it's very, very hard to use. So after I switch it to HPO, you know, I, I, we have a tool, we can easily to get the hierarchy. And only the, only the, the hierarchy of only the terms uh, like, uh, we, we, we got from this case, uh, but it's a technical question. So if we use snow with the hierarchy, it's likely okay, but uh, basically uh, this way, Ontology modeling can show you how the system can work out. So to summarize uh, my talk, I would say the KTAL standardized all components of kidney atlas. So basically, I think it's a key component, or you can think it's at the knowledge, knowledge level of kidney atlas. And we can put the, not only terms, but also put the relations in together. And we use OPMI to standardize data and metadata especially clinical data, and we can also use it uh, to integrate, represent uh, common data models. So currently, uh, we are still working on uh, a lot of things, like uh, not only uh, those things, we are also trying to look for the tissue integration, assays, pathology, molecular pathway. So it's a lot of things going on in the future. Uh, one other thing I'd like to say is like, uh, I heard, uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, the hub map also uh, is trying to use in develop, developing ontology approach. I would think uh, it would be good uh, to work together uh, collaboratively so we can learn from each other and, and, and get some uh, uh, community based uh, consensus on ontology systems, which will be wonderful for the whole community. And with that, uh, I like to see a lot of people, uh, including uh, the so Michigan, like Matthias, Becky, they all uh, contributed a lot, and then my student, Edison Ong, and the uh, UW, and uh, like I say, uh, thank you for your invitation and, uh, and the collaboration, and also the John and Laura, Ravi, and a lot of community people. Uh, we had an ontology workshop just for KPMP, uh, like uh, yeah, last year, it was wonderful. Uh, we got a lot of community support. And also like to thank, thank uh, KPMP funding from NIDDK. Thank you.